Well, hi, Fnai folks, and welcome to another cryptic crossword walkthrough. Our last one of these seems to be really popular, so I'm giving it another go because every time you watch one of these videos, YouTube gives us a bit of money, which we then send on to charity. So it's really great that you can be building up your own brain power while helping people with chronic disease at the same time. If this is your first time doing a cryptic crossword walkthrough, I suggest checking out the cards on this video to look for the video that came before this one. The crossword that I'm actually using in this video came from one of our loyal viewers, and in fact a previous collaborator, Barry, from up in Southport near Liverpool, he sent me a crossword from a magazine, which um, it doesn't actually tell me, as you can see from the photo, whereabouts he got this crossword from. And he is keeping the answers to make sure that there is no way I could know how this puzzle is solved without actually solving the puzzle. So it is quite a challenge really. However, just like before, I have some tools at my disposal. On my phone here, I have WordWeb, which is a really great dictionary to use because you can um, just fill in blanks and it'll suggest a variety of words that you can use. I also have on here a crossword dictionary. Um, I use the Chambers one because it's a great app. A uh, crossword dictionary, again, is kind of like a thesaurus, just um, it tends to group things by the number of letters in a word. Now again, personally, I don't think there's any problem using these sorts of tools because the whole point of a cryptic crossword is that you have to sort of solve clues to discover the answers. And sometimes that can mean that you encounter words that you'll never have encountered before. And yet the cryptic crossword helps you to feel absolutely confident that you're right. So it's sort of like a journey of discovery. But that is one of the reasons why I don't use other tools like anagram solvers, because, well, they kind of defeat the point of the puzzle, really. You, know, you don't want a tool that's going to actually solve it for you. You still have to do some of the legwork. So here on this piece of paper, I've got a sketch out of the puzzle that um, Barry sent me. Um, I've obviously got the photo on the iPad here. That is uh, going to give me all of the clues. And other important things that you'll need is a cup of tea and some biscuits. Like before, I'm going to make sure that all the clues for this puzzle are in the description box below in the order that we come to them so that you can follow us on this walkthrough. Another thing I'll say just before we begin is that I'm actually doing this before I go to work today, so I am working to a time limit. I've got to stay really, really focused on this one. So without any further fanfare, let's get started. So the first one I'm going to look at is naturally one across. Now the Duke of Edinburgh is Philip and his name would fit if it's spelled with one L. I'm not entirely sure if it does. But the words gave encouragement in there suggests that we're either looking for a word of encouragement that leads us to Philip or that the Duke of Edinburgh is somehow going to lead us to a word for encouraging. Duke of Edinburgh could of course be one of those words where the D and the E, the sort of title, has importance, so it could be do something. But I have to admit, nothing is coming to me fast enough, so I'm just going to move on. Uh, perhaps looking at one down will help, because then I'll have the first letter for one across. So here, the first thing I would do is look at the words and see if there are any indicators for a kind of clue. So you'd be looking to see if there's something that tells me this is going to be an anagram, something that tells me this is going to be a word in words, something that tells me this is going to be jigging around the letters some way. One down doesn't really seem to have any of those in. If it doesn't have any of those things, then what it's probably going to be is a double definition clue, which means there are two separate definitions for the same word in the one clue. So I'd be looking for a word that means don't, but also eat quickly, uh, rush or something, or a word that means don't eat, that also means quickly. The first one that's coming into my head right now is diet which matches the idea of one across having a uh, letter D at the front. But again, probably because I'm just warming up at the moment, I'm going to skip this one and come back later when hopefully we'll have a few more letters to help. So the one I'm looking at now, after such a full start, is 4A. And the good thing about this one is there's a word in there that we encountered in the last video that I did, and that's the word motorway, which we found could be substituted for M1, which, of course, when written down, looks like M-I. So we've got uh, two letters of the word straight away. And looking at the word trouble, the letters M-I immediately make me think of uh, mistake. Of course, that doesn't fit the amount of letters that we have. 
have, so let's have a look at boss. If I was looking for a word that means boss, which could also be the other half of a word meaning trouble, I might go with something like chief, because a chief of a tribe is like a boss of a tribe, and we have mischief. If you're wondering where the S comes from, we do of course have in here uh, the trouble from motorways boss and because it's after an apostrophe it's sort of like the M1s so M-I-S so I'm going to go ahead and put that in straight away because working out that way proves to me there's absolutely no other word that clue could be so finally some letters and let's have a look and see where they can help us for down has to begin with M and young ladies could be mamazan, that obviously doesn't fit. If you imagine that most young ladies are not going to be married, they would be misses. And of course, feels the loss is the definition in that clue there. So we have misses and young ladies. Once again, it's going to be a double definition. I can't see that being anything else. So once again, with both of these clues, what we're seeing is that there's a definition and then there's a cryptic part which may be another definition, or it may be something that's a substitution, in which case you've got no help with that, you just have to look for it, or there is an indicator for the kind of clue. Looking at five down, this one again is coming to me fairly quickly because church is one of those words that can be substituted uh, quite regularly for ch. It's a little bit like the motorway, that one, which suggests to me that this might have come from the puzzle group because the puzzle in the last video that we did, um, I discovered was actually given to Hertfordshire Mercury by the puzzle group. And you often find that crossword setters have similar substitutions in mind. So here we had motorway M1. Church often comes down to CH. Um, and then we have in a foreign land. And the in a could just be put straight next to the CH to give us China, which is a foreign land if you're watching this video in anywhere that's not China. So I'm gonna whiz that one straight in. And looking at six down next. Now here we do have an indicator. Sounds as if suggests a word that sounds like the definition of something. So for instance, a biro mark could be ink, which uh, comes into my mind because we know the first letter here is I, but it's not actually going to be I-N-K. Um, it's more likely to be I-N-C, which of course sounds like ink. I'm going to put in the I-N-C very faintly uh, because I'm not sure yet how this one finishes. On the level is likely then to be the definition here, uh, which means we've only really got the word not to give us the second half of this clue. Right now I can't think of a four-letter word meaning not that's going to give us a word meaning level or on the level when stuck next to ink. You could go to your crossword dictionary at this point, but I'm just going to plough on and see how far I can get. Because uh, I've got a couple of letters now for nine across, and uh, this will be also a good way of confirming whether that C is true for the ink. Okay, now looking at nine across, the word erosion suggests to me that perhaps you could have some words in here that you have to take letters away from in order to leave you with the answer. However, crossword setters aren't usually that mean. They would normally give you some indication as to how many letters you would have to throw away. There is another word in here which is protects, and that of course means that things are enclosed, and that could possibly be an indicator for one of those word within words. I can't imagine there being any definition for vitamin C other than vitamin C. Maybe that's because I'm not a scientist, but there you go. So I'm going to have a look for something in the word vitamin C that might give us a thing you can find in your kitchen. And of course, if protects is our indicator word, then erosion is part of the puzzle as well. And in the middle of vitamin C erosion is a mincer. And not something you'd find in um, our kitchen, uh, given that um, I'm vegetarian, but we'll pop it in there anyway. So that confirms the C in six down, and probably the N as well. But to try and help us with the second half of that clue, now I'm going to have a look at 11 across to try and get some more letters for six down. So we've got two possible definitions here, trellis for fruit trees and where pears lie around. I can't really think of there being a, a 
a special word for a place where we find pears lying around, which suggests to me that our definition is going to be a trace that use for fruit trees. Not being majorly into gardening, I don't have this word immediately coming to my head. So now I would look at the cryptic side of the clue, and the word around could mean, very simply, that the words next to it just need to be switched around. And that would give us which doesn't seem to work for me either. But around can also be an anagram indicator, and of course we do have the letters E and A there, which are in the words pairs lie. We also have the letters ER as well, which could mean that this is a noun that ends with ER because it's a help standy yupper. So I'm just going to faintly put in the E and the R for the moment because, once again, not knowing anything about fruit tree trellises, I, I can't see uh, an anagram here that works, so I think I'm going to need more letters for 11 across. That doesn't help us with 6 down, but let's have a look at 7 down. Okay, now I've got this one really quickly because, of course, 7 down begins with F, um, I see the word castles and I think of another type of castle, another word for castle, which is fortresses. And then when you look at the cryptic side of this clue, the word supporting can be substituted for for. Because, you know, when you're on the same side as someone, you're said to be for them, um, so that's a, a level of support. For also begins with F, but it ends with R, which is the next letter we have there. And the final word there is locks, and perhaps because I live with a makeup artist, I'm aware that another word for locks is tresses. So put four and tresses together, we've got our clue. Okay, that's kind of confirming the R at the end of 11 across, but... So far, most of our clues here have actually been substitutions, and again, I think that is part of this set of style. I think they really like um, words that are built from little substitutions of other words. Um, so I'm just going to have another look at six down, see if I can work out that. It's just come to me, of course. A by remark isn't just ink, um, but you can make an ink line. And an incline means that you are not on a level, which would be the full definition of the other half of that clue. An incline, of course, fits right in. It gives us another I, which is part of the um, anagram letters that we have for 11 across, but I still haven't got a clue what that is. The only letters I've got left are E, S, P, and L, and the only one of those that makes sense before the R at the end is E. I don't think there'd be any word that has isser or ipper. So it's going to be a question of working out where the letters go in the middle. So at this point, you could again use WordWeb just to see all of the words that have the letters in that pattern. But I suppose you could argue that that might be the equivalent to using the anagram finder here because you know there are only three letters left. So any word that WordWeb gave you which had the, those three letters in, um, providing there is only one combination of those three letters, would be the word. So I'm just going to see if I can help myself out one last little bit with 12 down. No, I can't because there is the word in, which could be a word in a word again. Um, but I can't see anything in between words like concert salon and the coast um, to give us our answer. The word resorts could also mean that this is an anagram because you could look at that and read it as resorts. But the only word with the right number of letters is coast. I can't see any way of rearranging the letters to make a word that means concerts. Tacos, maybe? I suppose it's possible that tacos could also be a Mexican concert type. So this, I feel, is a justified use of WordWeb because I already have the word and I'm just checking the definition. But it doesn't look like it's going to be that. Okay, so to help with 12 down, I'm now going to have a look at 16 across, which does have a couple of letters. Once again, um, checking first for a definition which might fit. Uh, coins uh, for some men in blue. So loads of different permutations here that could give us a definition. It could be uh, coins, it could mean coins for some men, it could be men in blue, or it could just be blue. However, because there's an S at the end, which lets us know that the answer here has to be plural, 
the right definition is probably going to be a plural as well. So the word coins in there is a plural. I think we're going to be looking for a word meaning coins that is also a plural. And why hell that can just be anything because I've got change which doesn't fit and I've got pence which doesn't fit. In fact, there are loads of words for coins that are plural but don't end in an S which is damn annoying. But let's move on to 20 across then. And when a clue has the word French in there, it can just mean that you're looking for really simple French words, which is great if you're someone like me who is not very good at languages. I do have a vague recollection of available French that she in French is L um, and is is S or Est. Those two would fit together to make what I think is a name. So this time again, I think I found the word, but I'm not sure that word where it actually has names in it. So um, I'm going to have a look on Google just to see. And even before I finish putting it into the search bar, we've got an option come up for Sina, Estelle. So yeah, I'm just going to put that one straight in because it fits and the cryptic part helps me to see it makes sense. Doesn't really help me with 12 down though, so I'm going to try getting some more letters for 16 across to help us with that one. 17 down. Again, this one's pretty obvious really because an incumbent US leader is a president, president of the United States. Um, that one fits in the letters that we have with the E that we have. But actually this clue is quite clever because another word for incumbent is resident and piano is a musical term for soft. It's not just a musical instrument. And the way you represent this when you're writing music is you put a little P underneath the stave to show that you want the P to play quietly here. And if you put that P in front of resident, you get president. So this is a very clever clue. As a sentence, it makes perfect sense, but it also gives us the answer. And it also gives us a P for 16 across, which suddenly becomes obvious because a type of coin that would fit in there would be coppers. But coppers are also men in blue. So it's another double definition. And that now means that we have an O to help us with 12 down. Sometimes a question mark can mean that the setter is trying to be clever and that the whole clue is some kind of lavish pun. But we've got an S on the end, which means we're likely to be looking at another plural here. And there are concerts held by the BBC every year called the Proms, which would fit. And Prom, of course, is short for promenade, which is to walk along. But I have a little sense that promenade can also be a kind of, well, it can be a noun, it can be a place where you seaside resort. I'm not 100% convinced with myself here. Again, like I said, it's really early in the morning. I haven't even gone to work yet. So I'm just going to stick proms into word where looking at that definition, I'm a little bit more convinced that uh, promenade could be another word for resorts. So I'm going to stick that in. Of course, I should have said that one of the reasons that I was thinking of proms is because I knew that the three letters we have left for 11 across are E, P and L. So I was starting to think of words that were five letters down for a plural of a type of concert beginning with P, beginning with L and beginning with S, but I kind of stopped with P because it gave me proms. Now I've only got two letters left for 11 across. It could either be El Passier or Espalier. Espalier maybe sounds a little bit more right. So once again, I got to the word by other means. I now feel totally justified looking at the word web to find the definition, which is how the crossword will actually be expanding my vocabulary. And yeah, there we go. Espalier, a trellis. So in it goes. So of course, this video has been edited. So what you guys don't know is that it's taken me about 30 minutes to do just over one quarter of this puzzle. I really need to speed up now. So I'm going to stick with looking at words that I already have a letter for. That's a really good way to get started. And 24 across has an I in it. I can see hotel, 
which suggests there's going to be an H involved somewhere. Um, and icy showers, um, a word beginning with H for icy showers is hail, which would fit. However, it is true that we have all the letters for ale in Manila, um, but they're not stuck together. The word ale isn't there in Manila. So I'm just going to put it in lightly for now. If it was true, then we'd need an H to start 24 down. And when you see phrases like Spain's capital, that is probably designed to make you think Madrid. But there's no way Madrid is going to fit in this clue. Another way of thinking of capital is, of course, capital letter. The capital of Spain is S. A word meaning dislike is hate. And if you look at the words going around and take that as an indicator that the word hate is going to go around the letter S, that gives you the inner rush, which could of course be the definition here. So I'm going to put that in again fairly tentatively at the moment, just because I'm still not all that sure about 24 across. If it is right though, it means 27 across would have two letters already. And when I look at a clue like this, I immediately doubt that ace tests is going to be the definition. I think the closest thing you would have to a test specifically to find out whether someone is an ace is an IQ test, but generally that's an odd kind of phrase. Old medium makes more sense as a definition because basically you're looking at a historical precursor to things like DVDs and USB cards. Now there are probably going to be loads of old mediums that I can't immediately call to mind, like whatever they used to call those plastic cylinders that they would stick into things before they had record players. But looking at the other half of the clue, as if it's cryptic, um, we can see the word concerning. Concerning can mean dubious, and if it's dubious, that could be an anagram indicator. And ace tests is eight letters, which of course could fit an anagram for this clue. The letters S and E are already there and it's got to be cassette, hasn't it? It gives us an E for 25 down, and this one's actually quite quick to do too, because uh, like we said in the last video, the word in can sometimes mean you're looking for a word in words. Um, so this gives us two options. It could be teeth, or it could be fate. And fate is another word for a kind of fair, so I think that one's going straight in. Which gives us two definite letters for 29 across. Um, two and a half if you include the E from paste. We can again see the word in, but it's harder this time because we would be looking for not just the letter E, but also the letter T and the letter E, and that same sort of pattern. It would have to be E something T, something something E. That's not there in the words complete book or Republic of Ireland, um, so it's quite possible the definition here could be in Republic of Ireland. We're looking for a place in the Republic of Ireland, which is really going to limit my knowledge. But I do know that Republic of Ireland itself can sometimes be called Ire. And of course, a word meaning complete is entire. That's a word that fits. It has Ire in it, and that will just leave us with the letters NT, which you can explain by looking at the word book. Now, well, NT stands for New Testament, which is a book in the Bible. Bible shorthand is again quite handy for cryptic crosswords. Basically, any kind of shorthand is really useful for cryptic crosswords, like the musical shorthand of quiet or soft giving you P, um, or loud giving you F. So that confirms haste, and this is starting to make hail look even more likely. But again, just to be on the safe side this time, I'm going to use WordWeb just to see if there is anything else with the letters H blank, I blank that could fit. Again, this isn't cheating, I'm still going to have to do a bit of work to choose between whatever options WordWeb gives me. And looking down that list, Hail still seems to be the only one that works for me. It does have all the letters there, of course. So, <laughs> what is going on here is you are getting the letters out from Manila, and it's every second letter. So, M A N I L L. So, basically, it's all the even letters. Very clever, and lets us know that we definitely have the right answer 
with hail. Okay, I'm sort of going around the puzzle in the clockwise direction. That gives me 21 down now. And given that it's got a form of the word support in there again, we could be looking at another four. But the only thing that I can see going in there with the letter C would be forced. And I know there are some special days for couples which can seem quite forced, but I think that's taking that or thinking to the extreme. This clue can't be a day because days tend to end with D-A-Y. Um, there aren't any shorthand for days that I can think of because there's not a day beginning with C. So I think we're probably going to be looking at um, the word supported being the definition. And that would mean that this clue is likely to end with ED because it's in the past tense, supported. Um, but I'll come back to that one, see if I can get more letters for it. By going to 22 across, thespian is someone who's involved in drama or acting. Um, so actor, editor usually gets shortened to the letters E. So either side of this clue at the moment is looking like it could be a substitution. Neither side is really looking like it could be a definition. So I'm again going to skip that one for now because I am pushed for time. 26 down. Now this clue has lots of words in it which could mean an anagram. We've got of course extremely crazy which could mean it's an anagram of, of some of the letters of uh, imbecility or completely and imbecility could mean it's uh, an anagram of crazy or something else and, yeah bear with me a moment speaking of imbecility breaking the pen has allowed me to realize that i did not switch my microphone on so um apologies for all of the sounds that you would have heard earlier of tito munching away on his biscuits it'll be much clearer from here on in i promise obviously though i can't go back and start again because i've already started going back to 26 across the word extremely can mean literally the extremes it can be trying to point us to the letters at the end of words like completely or crazy which is actually both c and y and also i and y which are the extremes of imbecility but c y i y Shoye is not helping me at the moment, so I'm gonna move on. 28 across is a little bit easier because seeing a phrase like resting place and set in stone kind of instantly makes me think of graveyards uh, or graves. One word meaning intent is end. You know, you intend to do something, it's the end to a means or the means to an end. And the word surrounding can again mean you take that word and put it around another. And if you take the word end and put it around grave, you get engraved. Another word meaning to set in stone. So it's quite nice there that the definition actually helped us to work out the cryptic part, which then helped us to get the definition. Don't you just love these puzzles? That hasn't really helped with 21 down though, because I already kind of knew this was gonna finish with ED because it's in the past tense. I think this is probably going to be a word meaning couple, literally just on the letter D. D being the initial of the word day. It's a bit of a poor substitution in a way, but it does mean we can easily find the last part of this clue which has to be in the past tense. So we're looking for a word meaning couple that ends with CE. And if you think of it as couple from a technology point of view for the moment, so it could be a word like uh, join or joint, because couple in technology is both noun and verb. Possibly brace, because that sort of fits. Again, gonna put it in tentatively just for a moment. I'm aiming to get 22 across now, which means doing 23 down to get some more letters. The one that straight away fits for me is mocker. I guess because we've got Ms. Chanel, which begins with M. But with something like this, Ms. Chanel could be a particular celebrity that that the setter is trying to refer to. So I'm just going to, again, do some detective work to see if it helps me get the word here. Okay, so Miss Chanel is actually called Coco. Um, and if you add an A to the end of Coco, then you get the hot drink. That is the definition here. If you're wondering where the A comes from, well, it's right there in the clue. And if you give Coco an A, then you have Coco. That gives us another letter for 22 across. Um, in fact, actor will now fit. And of course, it's come to me, uh, blushing is something that turns you red. 
And if you put red in front of actor, you get redactor, which means that actually this time round, editor is the definition. Another great example of a substitution of a smaller word for a word in the clue, um, which this crossword setter seems to really like doing. Okay, I'm going to check out 19 down now. So again, thinking of the word quietly, that can mean P or PP, both musical substitutions. Walking quietly, though, is one of those active verbs, isn't it, with ING on the end. And that would fit with the bottom of this clue because we know it's got to end with G. So we could really be looking at walking quietly being the definition. If that was the case, then bear loses weight obviously isn't going to be a definition. This is going to be something cryptic and it's probably going to be a kind of bear losing some letters that mean weight. Now weight can be things like LB for pound, so it could be a type of bear that has the letters LB next to each other. Weight can also be ton, which is T-O-N-N-E or T-O-N. And in fact, that makes me think it's probably not going to be a kind of bear. We could be looking at the name of a bear because one name for a bear that definitely has ton in it is, of course, Paddington. And if you take that ton away, what are you left with? You're left with padding, which is walking quietly. Okay, we're definitely shooting along now. I might still get to work on time. 13 down has the words fryer and tense next to each other and the word about, which again is an anagram indicator. And another clue that this is an anagram is that we've got 10 letters to play with. And there are two words here next to about, which together have 10 letters. Which would mean mixing up the words fryer tense to give us a word meaning associate. Now words for associate could be colleague, acquaintance, both of which don't have letters that you find in fryer tense. Uh, come on brain. Of course associate doesn't have to be the noun, it could also be the verb, associate. If it's associate, then we could be looking at making a verb with those words. I say this because having the letter F quite prominent in that phrase has made me think of fraternalize, which of course it can't be either because there's no L, but is it fraternalize or is it fraternize? Because if it's fraternize, then it actually would fit. I'm not going to bother checking this one because I think it's just me adding extra syllables which aren't needed. Because that might confuse everyone in America who might say, hang on a minute, there's no Z in fryer tense. But putting that in does help us with 26 across. A uh, first letter is always really helpful, especially when we know that a word for fool is an idiot. And the start of this clue says it's fool but not completely. We can make the word idiot here, but we can't completely make it. We could sort of make the I-D-I-O. But then we have C and we know that the extremely crazy could give us CY. If you put that next to the idio, then we have idiocy, and that is a form of imbecility. Again, another pretty cleverly put together clue there, I think. You could argue that both sides of it are actually the definition in a way, but while a fool is an idiot, he suffers from idiocy, so the noun here is definitely the condition. Let's have a look at some of the other words we can get from that fraternize. 18 across. T something P makes me think of tape or taped or taping, and if we use just tape that gives us another three letters um, to try and get out from about department head in order to get to a definition, which in this case has to be something to do with getting to the point. Now department is one of those words that can be shortened down to D-E-P-T um, and about can mean flipping it round but to ped doesn't really fit here. Department head though could just be D because again the word head could be indicating a letter within a word. It will usually be indicating the first letter in a word and about is one of those fantastic words in cryptic crosswords that can be anything. It can mean swap the letters around, it can mean an anagram, it can also be substituted for the letters RE. You know when you say that um, this letter is re blah 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 blah, it's about blah 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 blah. And if we put the RE here with a D, that gives us tapered, which means getting to a point. I've got about 20 minutes before I have to leave to get to my booking on time, so we better hurry. 15 down looks like it should be easy because we've got the last letter and the middle letter. The word during here suggests to me that this is going to be another word in words, another kind of clue that we think this setter 
really likes. And that means that the definition is either going to be the 70s, which doesn't make sense, I don't think there's a particular word that means the 70s, or it's going to mean it took place. And if we look in the word 70s, what we can see there is a five letter word that ends in T with an E in the middle. That means something that took place. And that gives us two letters for 14 across. Immediately I'm looking at this and I'm thinking the word Rainia fits. It fits the definition of wetter weather and it fits the letters that we've got there already, but not too sure about the European prince thing. The only thing I can imagine is that maybe there is a European prince with the name Rainia. Okay, I'm going to take a gamble. I've actually written it in before checking this on Google to see if there is a Prince Rainier. And there is, or there was, um, died in 2005, Rainier III, Prince of Monaco, who probably would be famous enough to get into a crossword because he was apparently married to Grace Kelly in the 1950s. See, you learn something new every cryptic crossword. Okay, now looking at two down. The word enclosing suggests that this is going to be a word around a word, although it doesn't actually say what that word could be, so it's probably going to be not a word around a word. Ages ago um, makes me think with the pattern of the letters we got at the end there of something like once upon a time, but what would, what would that be? Bonce? Comps? Lomps? Donce? I think we'll give that one a miss for the moment. 8A, Bowler's Spiders. Again, this is probably going to be a plural because we've got an S on the end, which means the definition is more likely to be spiders. That's the only plural there, of course, because Bowler's has the apostrophe. Although it could still be a double definition if it's something that belongs to a bowler. Now, one kind of spider is the daddy long legs, um, depending on which side of the Atlantic you are, whether they are spiders or crane flies. Long legs fits. I'm going to kind of lightly put that in because I'm not entirely sure whether every bowler has long legs, but maybe they do. I'll see once I've got some of the other clues to check. Ten across looks like it should be easy because whenever you have a word that's made up of another word that is only one letter, you've got pretty limited options. It could be x-ray, but that doesn't fit with anything. It could be a something or i something. Actually, it could be pretty much just A or I something. And a children's game with I is, of course, I spy. And that fits with the cryptic part of this because one in Roman numerals is just the letter I and glimpse is spy. So that gives us I spy. I'm not entirely happy with the clue because I'm convinced that's what um, the answer is. But would you really hyphenate I spy? Yeah, I think that should have been one comma three. But which would mean that for two down, our second word, the five letter part of this word, would be S something N, which of course is going to be since, isn't it? Since is a word that means a go, but I'm still struggling to see where the bananas comes in. Bananas is another word, of course, that can mean going crazy, so this could be an anagram, actually. Again, indicators of anagrams are words that can mean doubtful or crazy or mixed up and all of the letters of since are in the word enclosing which has nine letters so this probably is an anagram it leaves us with n l o g which give us the word long okay so now we have an l in one across and Again, if you're thinking of the Duke of Edinburgh being Philip, it would fit if it was one L. But looking at one across again, I'm, I'm now looking at the word reportedly, because like six down, which we did earlier, reportedly can mean this is the kind of clue where something sounds like something else. So now I'm wondering whether Philip's name actually is a word that can give encouragement, maybe spelled, I don't know, F-I-L-L-I-P. So again, now I've got what I think is the answer, I'm going to check it on WordWeb. Um, if, if I'm right here, this crossword has actually taught me loads of things. It's taught me a name for a fruit trellis, it's taught me um, about this Miss Chanel, about a singer called Estelle, it's taught me about um, the Prince of Monaco, and it has just taught me that to Philip means to give encouragement. So yeah. This is quite an educational crossword, this one. We have a P which starts three down. So look at a clue like this. 
Our definition is either going to be devotion or it's going to be tray. I doubt it's going to be devotion to a pastry dish, unless there is a specific word out there for someone who really loves quiche, or a word out there that means filling specifically taken from a tray, sort of like dentistry for inanimate objects. Of course, fittings taken from a tray does look kind of cryptic to me. And remember when we looked at the word erosion earlier, we said that sometimes crossword setters will tell you to take letters out, but they will be kind and they'll let you know exactly which letters you need to take. Well, if we look at the word tray and we take out the filling for that word, it leaves us with TY. We've already got a Y at the end of this word and a pastry dish can be a pie. If you put pie on top of ty, you have piety, which is a word that means devotion. That's our definition. Piety is definitely the word for there. Just going to nip back to one why didn't I get this before? You see, this just goes to show how much your brain can be woken up by a cryptic crossword. Of course, one down is a double definition. A word that means don't eat and a word that means quickly is fast. Which is much easier to see when the first letter is F, but still, Chip, why didn't you get that earlier? So that has nearly completed the crossword. Obviously, uh, long legs doesn't fit anymore. The only word that I can really see fitting there is swingers. And it does kind of work because I think uh, bowlers' arms are swinging when they're bowling and of course spiders are swingers when they're on the end of their thread and you know waiting for the wind to take them to wherever they're going to go so i really can't see that being anything else but i am just going to check with wordweb to see whether there is anything else that could match either of those definitions okay it's given me only 31 matches there doesn't really seem to be much here that would match both the definition of bowlers and spiders. I mean, we've got spinners. It could be spinners. It does mention that a spinner is a kind of board game equipment, but bowling's not really a board game, is it? So the only one that they have which really makes sense is swingers. And in their definition, they say someone who swings sports implements. Um, which of course would be a bowler. So I reckon that is definitely going to be swingers. And that means that Barry's crossword is now, I think, complete. I'm pretty much convinced of all of the answers in this one, actually, because we have gone through both the definitions and the cryptic side of the crossword. And on those clues where the answer was completely new to me have been sort of checked on Google and WordWeb, and it seems to all make sense. I've learned loads from this puzzle. Last time, I did get one of the words wrong, even though it fit. So there is a chance I haven't 100% completed this, but we'll only get to find that out when Barry lets me in on the answers. And hopefully he'll do that soon, so I don't have to keep you guys in suspense for too long. Now I managed to do that in pretty much exactly an hour and 10 minutes, so I need to kind of dash now. But if you, have a cryptic crossword that you are getting stuck with, please do pop it into the comments below and we'll maybe feature that in one of our next how to do cryptic crosswords walkthroughs and subscribe as well, not just for cryptic crossword videos, but also other fun videos, each of which raise money to fight chronic illness every time you just watch them, which is free for you. So you can feel just as awesome as if you'd just completed a cryptic crossword. So cheers for watching folks. Stay thankful and ciao for now.